And I Let us humble ourselves for a prayer. <coughs> our most gracious Father, what in heaven we come before you. We gather here together to ask of your blessings. And we pray that you may be with us, your Holy Spirit may be in us, and you may speak to our minds and instruct us in the way you want us to go. It's our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We thank God for this time. that is given unto us that we may come once again to learn. And the topic is restoration of all things. It is health message, health reform and the loud cry. And everyone is required to understand what really we ought to do in this last day. It is because of the great commission we've been given in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse number, verses number 18, 19, that go ye therefore and teach. Now that part of teaching and preaching and whosoever shall make a decision shall be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we are called to make sure that people make a decision for Jesus Christ. But the gospel ought to be preached in a practical sense. As a witness, that is what I was endeavoring to make us understand. And I told us last time that Christ will be in heaven until the restitution of all things. Acts chapter 3 verses number 19 and 20. And while he's doing a greater work in heaven, the people, his people in the world Living here, we who are seated here must do a work of cleansing themselves, transforming their lives, and walking in the footprints or footsteps of Jesus Christ, as in Second Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. 
we must reflect the lovely image of Jesus fully. We must tell the world that there is something better, and it is called the gospel of Christ. We must live like he lived. Because everything in the creation, in the creation world, is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Romans 8 verses 22 and 23. That manifestation has to be manifested or demonstrated by a people living the life of Jesus Christ. And once God would have obtained the number that is needed, then he shall come and take his people home. Uh, so we want to learn what are we supposed to do? Which work are we called to do? Is the work of medical missionary work, the health message, how we are supposed to demonstrate it to the world? That is my burden for us to understand how we are supposed to carry out that work how we are supposed to present it to the world that there is no any other person shall, that shall gain the same. If we meet that standard, then I believe the whole world will be, lit, uh, will be lit with the glory of God. You know that fourth angel in Revelation chapter 18? He filled the whole world with his glory. The character of God. And then they went forth to proclaim the message, come out of our, my people. So the light, the character, the manifestation of the life of Christ must be seen in the people proclaiming the message so that people can be made to believe. So we read, the giving of the gospel to the world is the work that God has committed to those who bear his, his name. Are you reading the, the wall? It's not very clear. For earth, sin, and misery, and for us, sin, and misery, the gospel is the only antidote. Is the world in sin, true or false? The world is in sin, right? Does the world needs a remedy? Does the world needs a remedy? Yes. The world needs a solution. But it needs to be the solution that, uh, that makes people to be like Jesus Christ. And to make known to all mankind the message of the grace of God is the first work of those who know its healing power. The first work we've been given is to make known the grace of God to the world. And the grace of God that Titus chapter 2 verses 11, the grace of God has appeared unto all men teaching them to deny ungodliness. And then the last part there says to live righteously in this present world. So when the grace appears to the world, Jesus Christ is, his spirit is the grace, is the grace. His life is the grace. So when that life is demonstrated to the world, then I tell you, Jesus Christ will come. So the word of God must be presented as a healing power. Are we together? We, there are many ways it can be demonstrated as a healing power. If you read Psalms 107 verses 20, Psalms 107 verses 20, you can read it. Your time says, he sent his word and healed them. And destruction did not come upon them. So as the word of God is a healing word, it brings healing because that is how Christ himself was 
speaking to those who are sick. So the first work we've been given is to demonstrate the healing power of the word of God. And that word carries the spirit, the mind, and the life of God. John 6, 63, the Bible says, the body profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth, that gives life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. So when we unlock these promises by faith, they are fulfilled in our lives. And that is the first work we have been given to give to the world. So this gospel must be uh, presented to the world as a witness. So we read also that there are many, uh, there are not many even among educators and statesmen who comprehend the causes that underlie the present state of society. Do you understand why there is a crisis in the health department, crisis in the agricultural world, crisis in the families, crisis in, in the justice and the law firms? There is no justice, there is no mercy. But yet there is only one solution that needs to be given to the world for them to understand the best solution for all world problems. Call it poverty. Call it whichever name. The difficult situations in the world today. Financial collapse. Those who owe the reins of government are not able to solve the problems of moral corruption, poverty, poparism, and increasing crime, increasing crime today. Yes, everywhere. There are crime in the cities, everywhere, in the, in, even in the villages. Crime has increased, but God's people have been called to give a solution to that. So it says they are struggling in vain to place business operations on a more secure basis. If men will give more heat. So what is the solution here? If men will give more heed to the teaching of God's word, they will find a solution of the problems that perplex them. So what is the only solution for all the problems of the world? Taking heed to the word of, of God. We will solve all the problems. And it is there in the word of God. God says, if thou shalt diligently hearken unto my voice, and follow my statutes. Then shall I not for I shall not put these diseases that I gave unto the Egyptians. For I am the Lord your God that healeth you. Exodus 15, verses 26. So God tells us that if we diligently hearken unto his voice, if we follow this word, if this word is presented to Museveni today and is converted to follow it. Uganda will be never will never be the same again. If it, it is presented to the leader of the UN and the whole world adopts it, God will bring a solution to all the world's problems. But yet people who are called to demonstrate that to the world, we who understand the plan of God. Remember, when Moses was to be the sanctuary, he was told that make sure that you build it according to the pattern which I showed you in the mountain. Exodus 25, 40. So we must follow that pattern as it was shown in the mountain. Now, the mountain here is our word. As it is shown in the word of God, we are supposed to demonstrate it to the world. Now, the gospel is a wonderful simplifier of what? Life's problem. The gospel is the wonderful simplifier of life's what? Problem. Its instruction hidden will make plain many a perplexity and save us from many an error. It teaches us to estimate things at their true value and to give the most effort to the things of great worth, the things that will endure. So when we follow the life of Jesus Christ, 
if it is lived as it ought to be without any hypocrisy as it is professed today, then I tell you, people will see the light and they will follow it. Do you want to be so? Do you want to be the light that people will follow? Yes, all of us should desire to be the light in our families, in the society, in the church, everywhere we go. It should be an inscription, a Christian. So there's a great work to understand this and then we follow it. Everywhere there are hearts crying out for something which they have not. I love this. That everywhere there are people crying for something they have not. You walk in, if you are doing, if you are a true minister of God walking into homes, you will find people with different lacks, needs. Everywhere they are filled. They long for a power that will give them mastery over sin. What do people long for? A power that will deliver them from sin because we are suffering from the consequences of sin everywhere. The whole creation is groaning because of sin. So a power that will deliver them from the bondage of evil, a power that will give health and life and peace. So there are three most important things that people need to see in the life of those pros, uh, who, are, who are supposed to give the last manifestation of glory to the world. They should be able to give health, healing. They should be able to give life. They should be able to give peace. Now, we cannot give peace the way the world gives peace. Jesus says so, right? In Matthew, uh, in John 14, 27, that my peace I give. You know that the world gives, do I give unto you? Let your, not, let your hearts not be troubled. So which peace does Christ give us? When his word and his promise, we know that there is a mighty God who is able to keep us. Then that gives us peace. Those who are stressed because of this world's activities and occupation will find peace if they know that there is a power that can make uh, can uh, sh uh, shun out or make them to uh, make them to thrive, not to, not to thrive, but defeat the evil that is manifested upon them. Then they will be assured of the protection of the promises of God. That is the work that God has given His people to do, and that is the true gospel medical missionary work. That is the true healing that we need to give to the world. Are you ready to learn all the technicalities that are ensured in this work? How many are, are, are desiring to know the technicalities? How this life-giving power can be given to the world? I want to see by a show of hands. Amen. So, uh, we are living in a world that is full of fear. How many of us here are not afraid? You're not afraid. You can see a lion and you just standing. Now it depends with how it appeared unto you. If you are in the house and you are seeing it passing outside, because you are shielded, you can close the door and it's coming in. But we see man. Fear is one of the consequences of sin. Fear is one of the consequences of sin. Adam and Eve feared when God came because of the guilt in them. So fear, naturally, the creation is in fear. When something terrible happens, we are told that Jesus says that if you see all these things happen, look up for your salvation, draw it. Nine. So if the first thing, if fear overcomes us, then we don't look up to Jesus Christ. The author and finish of our faith. And then the enemy triumph over us. So God's people have been called for a great work. The giving of the first, second, and third angel's message. And then 
they are supposed to have the patience and they are supposed to have the faith of Jesus Christ. Are we together? Are we together? So if we are supposed to solve the, the solution, to give a solution to the world, what might, what should we have? We should be bold, right? We should stand in the might of the Lord. We should stand with the word of God. Are we together? For us to finish the work, we must cast out this fear. We are living in a fear-based society where you are told if you are sick or you are suggested to eat, eat this food. Are there suggestions of such sort in this country where you are suggested? There are many ways that this can be suggested. The media is a medium of passing information. And there are a lot of advertisement. This food is good. And many people go after it. And then after you've taken that food that the devil has placed upon you, and sometimes we pray about for it, right? And then people say amen and take it. Later on, after some time, you become sick. What happens? The devil suggests to you that take this drug. After taking this drug, they tell you you can also do certain type of what? Treatment. Or you, you have eaten yourself to death. In, by the way, in Psalm 69, verses 22, 23, the Bible says that let their table be as near unto, unto them. Some people are in ignorance. They do not know what is best for the body. But the Bible gives, tells us what is the best food for the body. Genesis 1.29, that is the best food for the body. Genesis 1.29 and 3.18, the best food for the body. So when the world suggests for you the best food for the body and you follow that, you get sick and then you follow certain types of treatment then later on, what follows is death. Now, who are supposed to tell the world the true diet of the Bible? A people of God who understand that plan. According to the pattern, according to the way it was in the beginning. Because in the beginning, Genesis 1.31, the Bible says, and God saw that everything that he created was Good. Not man so. When man uh, saw that flesh diet was good for them, what happened? God left them to the desires of their lust. And then what followed? The diseases of the Egyptians. When man saw that the agricultural system, the modern agricultural system, we read about agri uh, agrarian revolution. In the early 17, uh, in the early 18 uh, centuries, that this is the best fertilizer and other things that can make us to have the best production. What happens today? Diseases. So when the moment man sees something that is good for it, for himself, the end thereof is always death. But demonially, we come into the plan of God demonially we will reflect that image of Jesus fully. We will help the world to understand what ought to be done. Now, the financial system of the world is collapsing. You know, there is a time that in the United States of America, uh, in the early times of the Advent movement, they presented a financial plan to the government that was going to solve the problem of the United States of America. But they did not follow it. But where are they today? It is collapsing. So the word of God has everything, every plan and policy that needs to be followed. At the same time, the papacy also has the best, they say the best plan, the sustainable development goals for 2030. 
and the whole world is wondering. They are really appraising that. But what is the end of it? It will be the end of trouble and uh, trouble that will be increasing upon this world. So God's people have been called to give the best solution. Where do we find the best solution? Not from our own perceptions and ideas, but from the word of, of God. So we are living in a fear-based society. People fear. People fear bacteria. Isn't it? Doesn't people fear bacteria? What happens when typhoid strikes your system and you are having a high fever and your bowels are moving uncontrollably and you, are, you, you have an a unceasing headache? What comes to your mind? What will click first if you don't have the faith of Jesus in you? Take this pill. You go take the over-the-counter drugs. Fear, and the world says, if there is a virus, we need to develop a what? The vaccine. So the devil creates this and brings this as a solution. If this is, it is like, is hiding this side, but presenting something good this side. You know, the devil's way is like a thousand story, a thousand rooms story building. It takes you from this, you have a very nice kitchen with all the foods you want. Say, let me just sit here and eat. At the same time, you eat and you overeat yourself and you're drunk, you sleep. Those who overeat, mostly they, oh, they, they sleep. And then after sleeping, oh, I'm feeling dizzy. I need to sleep. It takes you to a very nice lodge where you see the beds are nicely spread and there is everything you need. Over the other side, there is a pool. So you wake up after your nap and then you present a pool that you need. Oh, my body is very weak. I need to go and swim. You go to another room and then say, oh, my money is over. I need to upgrade my money. And the other side, it shows you a bank. You go with the draw your money there, the highest amount you can. You are continuing to get deep and deep. And then lastly, it tells you the house is in fire. You are in the hundredth room. Do you know where the exit is? By the time you're coming to the door, it is closed. Do you survive? So that is how it entices us. But we need to understand the true plan of God that he wants for us. So people fear insects. Insect, that is why we spray everywhere. Is it happening here in Uganda where people spray their soil? And that's, that, that chemical is very dangerous, by the way. Most women are suffering from um, breast cancer, cervical cancers because of the glyphosate. This is the chemical that you get in the Roundup, Downtouch, that are used, these chemicals uh, of herbicides and fungicides. They deposit in the body and then you will have a cancer cell beginning to grow in your body. The soil is depleted of all its nutrients. It kills the organism, the microorganism in the soil. So people want because of covetousness, we want to increase production. And by the way, most of the times when we go to schools, in the schools, those who do agriculture, you will never be taught organic agriculture. You will never be taught. Or if you are taught, it may be just a subject in one semester. The rest of your four or five for your D, uh, eight, years for you to get a PhD, you will never learn about organic agriculture. Yet it is here in the word of, of God. And that is the best plan that if we follow, then these troubles will never happen. Why do you think that God sent insects and pests to go and devour the, uh, the fruits and the vines of the children of Israel? Because they did not hearken unto the word of of God. 
Why do we have today a change in the in the weather patterns? Because people have gone away from the principles of the Bible, the Word of God. Is it true? Yes. If you read the book of Numbers, chapter number, uh, I think 11, you will find a lot of things there. God tells them that if you diligently hearken unto my voice and follow my statutes and my voice, then I shall reign. I shall give you rain in its time, the former and the latter rain. But do we have it these days? Can we predict? Long time when I was growing, the grandmother could say, you know, from 15 February, it is going to rain. And exactly it will begin to rain at that time. Or in 15 September or August, the last few weeks, it will begin to rain. And it begins to rain. But because evil is exceedingly increasing, people are so much covetous. They have gone away from the way of the Lord. Things are becoming worse and worse. Do we have food insecurity these days with all the agricultural policies we have today? Call it agribusiness or agronomy or any other uh, good terms. Do we have a solution for food security? In fact, it's becoming war, more worse and dependent. Yes, there, there is no solution. But long time, I could see people harvest and that grain will be stored in the granary until the next harvest, that three month period, and people harvest when there is still some portions of food remaining in the ground. Was it, is it here? Was it here? Did you experience that for those older people in this congregation? Yeah. Because the soil could yield its strength, it has not been tampered. But we have learned to treat plants, but not the soil. The best agriculturalist who gives the best solution, we learn to give. To, to, to learn from cause to effect. We are called to approach, solu to, to approach problem from the cause, the root cause, to the what? To the solution. We must ascertain the what? The cause. So by the way, the best agriculturalist will not treat the plant, but you treat the soil, the soil because there is where life begins but we don't have that principle today. You are called to give people the best they can. People fear the virus. People fear virus a lot because of maybe the repercussions that if they continue, but we have, if you find yourself fearing, it is because you have not followed the plan faithfully as God puts it here. And some of us will suffer from the consequences from our parents. From our parents, we suffer. We inherited it from our parents or from the, the society that was malfunctioning. And so we find it hard to come to that plan that God wants us to. But still there is hope when we hearken diligently. The Bible says, if you shall dilly, diligent. That diligence, diligence, what does diligence mean? Determine always to accomplish something. If I plant Skumawiki today, and after three weeks, the leaves are still, are just the way they were. They are yellowing and and some are dying off do i say this cannot work no 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 you should always listen diligently and research diligently and know the best you can give the bible said in isaiah 28 was it 28 verses from 20 26 i think so that he teach 
the plowman, the one who is the farmer in discretion and what he needs to do. So that voice and God wants us not to be people just sitting. Can the bird find food if he just stays in the nest? He will die, right? So the people of God must be studious, pious, and intelligent. You must be researching, demonstrating, and testing, and seeing what is best that works for you. When it works, then you praise the name of the Lord, you teach the world. So people fear the virus. What should, the, should God's people do? They should... Um, they should actually rest the people, uh, rest the people in the problem, in the promises of God, and what to do: teach and instruct and demonstrate. Now, most of the times, what we lack is the demonstration part. All we talk about: we need to eat well. No, eating meat is bad. Drinking milk is bad. Eating the bread is bad. But what do you offer? What do you offer? What do you offer? Do you offer the substitute for meat? Someone can eat and say, exactly, you make, this makes sense to me. This is the best. Someone can come to your home or wherever you are and say, oh, from today, I'm going to try this. And then comes later on two weeks and say, oh, I try that thing. It works. Please give me more. And then you hear after some six or one year, that guy is teaching people how, how to do that thing I taught. I read that such a kind of people who are demonstrating and experiencing. That is what we need to be because that is what the world wants to see. If we teach people that or educate people against meat eating, we should find all the best substitutes for meat. Milk is creating problem, mucus forming the first food that creates allergy in your system. What do I give you? Yes, come and come on such a date. I will prepare for you some of the varieties and choose for yourself. The Bible says, oh, test and see that the Lord is, is good. Blessed are they that trust in him. Can someone come and test and see and then believe, oh, the Lord is good. This is what I need to do. That is the kind of people that we need to be at the end of this camp meeting. Everyone must understand and, 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 and actually know what he's supposed to do. Not just sitting there and knowing, having a head knowledge. In the end time, the Bible says people will be heady, but not having godliness, right? Having the denying the power thereof, right? So that power of the gospel to save is first demonstrated in the character of people. If we say about the education system, what should we need to be? The best. If your child comes here, can teach, he can instruct, can give the best. That is what we want to do. And everything is here on how to do it. If the virus is bad, vaccination is really bad, by the way. Because it affects your immune system. It affects your immune system. So what you need to do, you, you should give people the natural antivirus, or the natural vaccine, right? But you must know by the way, the best medical missionary or a health educator do not work with herbs, right? As the, the, the forefront thing. You don't work like that. You will fail, my friend. You work from the course. To what? <laughs> you must understand whether you know some people. We, 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 we complain that the world is dragging, the hospitals are dragging people. But you can be a medical Missionary who drags the people, you know that? <laughs> because if you give the, uh, the, the, the powerful herbs to a person who is severely sick, 
that person will die if the body is not strengthened and regenerated and built strongly that when you give the natural remedy now, it is able to start. So you need to understand that. And those are the kind of medical missionaries or health educators that we need. Yeah, so you need to give the best of the world. COVID vaccine, when the vaccine came, what did you do? You are supposed to be giving the solution to the world. What do you think? If God's people would have heeded the message of country living and have advanced knowledge in medical missionary and treatment, intelligent treatments, skills, and have the best food to offer and have the facilities to take care of the sick, what do you think will have happened during the COVID crisis? What do you think? There will be a new somewhere that if you have COVID, where do you go to? Go to such a, such a place. But because we lack such a, such a place, we could not be able to, to give the solution that is foretelling. We need a solution that impresses the whole world. They come hearing. By the way, when Jesus Christ was doing miracles, read it in John chapter 12, the Greeks, you know the Grecians, those who are intelligent, philosophical people. Yes, they came and they said, we hold to see Jesus because he had resurrected Lazarus. He had made a leper. He had made, what was it a leper? That man who... The, the Pharisees were questioning his parents, and parents told him, no, 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 he is old enough, ask him. They have heard all about that, and they came from everywhere. You know what about, what about the time of the feast? So they came to see Jesus Christ because of the great things he was doing. Can people come to our homes? Can people come to our houses? If it is about cleanliness, People come to our houses and say, these people are. When they come to your kitchen, they say, these people are. They just surrender and say, this is the person we need to follow. You can be called to give lectures. You can be called to go and demonstrate to the, to the, to the world. Now, that is the glory that gives impetus to the message, giving the solution, accompanied by the truth. I tell you, this world will not last for a long time. But God's people have not understood it. The Bible says when fear comes, we have to look up for that is where we will find the solution. So the world needs a revelation of Jesus Christ. In order for the end to come, there must be a revelation of who? Jesus Christ. That revelation is what it entails everything that brings restoration to physical, mental, and what? Spiritual. Are we together? What work are we called to do? To give an holistic, harmonious, development or message that makes people to develop spiritually, physically, and mentally. A restoration message. And that is what Christ himself was giving to the world. You know that? If you read it in, in John chapter 5, in John chapter 5, Christ meets that woman. And would you wish that I make you all? And then a woman says, Thou can make me all. Now, the, our message should be not a message that takes part of it, the mental or spiritual part. It should be holistic, mentally, spiritually, and physically. So every one of us here must identify which line of restoration God has called him into based on the talent that he has or what you can do best, what you love to do most, 
that make you to either physically or mentally or spiritually bring restoration to the message. Because the final work must be done with the spiritual gifts. Are we together? For the disciples to finish the work for 40 years that Paul says in Colossians 1.23 that the gospel has been presented to all creatures. They had to be given the gifts, the gifts of healing, the gifts of government, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of teaching, the gifts, some are to be pastors, some are to be evangelists, some are to be prophets in the church. So the church is only complete when <clears throat> the gifts are manifested in the church, uh, amongst the people. Are we together? The church will grow. The disciples were able to add continually into the church when these gifts were put into practice. Are we together? They were able to accomplish much. The gift of healing, the gift of teaching, the gift of prophecy, of government, of healing, all were demonstrated in the church. And so it has to be demonstrated today. Each and every one of us here must understand which line as God called him to bring restoration. That is what you need to pray for. At the end of this meeting, you should know what you are going to do. And that is what is called true medical missionary work brings restoration in the physical, mental, and spiritual lines of the life of people. <clears throat> so Christ's method alone is what is going to bring to success. That method we get in the book of Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 and 36. And it was filled with compassion. When he looked at the people and he showed that they were like a people without a shepherd. He cried aloud and he saw these people are wandering away. They are scattered. The world, if you look today, people are scattered. Someone is suffering from cancer. He has gone for 23 sessions of chemotherapy. They say you have to go for 43 or 21. By the end of it, the person is, is, is withering. Yet, the people of God knows the best way. But always we take that best way half, halfway. We don't, we, we don't exercise the full, uh, the full gear of that uh, healing message that we have. And sometimes the battle, we lose battle after battles. And we fail. So that method. So in verses 36 of Matthew, we say that, he went about all the cities and villages and he was teaching and preaching and healing all manner of diseases. And then Christ was also publishing in Mark chapter 5.21. He said he, he went, he, when he had healed the demoniac, he went, he told him to go and publish. So our message for it to be holistic and bring bring glory to the whole world, we must have those who can teach, we must have those who can heal, we must have those who can preach, and we must have those who can publish the message to the world. Where do you fall? Where do you fall? That is the question. Because that is the totality of the medical missionary work. Teaching, healing, preaching, and publishing. So when we use that method, we must first mingle with people. We must know what such a person needs, you know, this person needs what, what is lacking, what is wrong in his life. There are some people who are saying that if you are a, a medical missionary is being led by God, you will not even prescribe any, any, any healing or herbal remedy out, out there, but just to speak to the mind, speak to him, and that enough is able to change his life. Do you know that? 
Yeah, we are, we are having a people who are stressed in this life. So if you are an intelligent person, you should know. This person just needs to drink water and exercise and clean the house. So you need to mingle with that person. You go to, where do you live? I live in such a place. Can I visit you? Yes, when you go there, you find the house is untidy. You find the corners of the house are not cleansed. You find the kitchen is not clean. Oh, this is why you're suffering from this. This is, can you begin to change? You help that person to clean the home. There are some people who are having respiratory diseases because of the ventilation in their home. So you mingle with them. That's what a true medical missionary will do. Oh, this person keep coming, asking me for food. Because you are a genuine Christian, you keep giving the food. And this person knows, oh, that person is a very generous person. I just need to go at, 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 at around the seventh hour, they will be eating. But you cannot tell him to go away. But you know you are injuring that person. If you are a true medical missionary, you need, you need to know what you do. You need to visit that person. If he can walk to your home, you go and find the best way to help. To help him. Are we together? That is the, the best healing you can give to that person. Or the best restoration. The best solution you can give to that person. We are not supposed to be working from the symptoms of the problem. But we need to be a people who are intelligent enough to give, to work from the root. Can you dig? Someone has a farm, but he stays in the city, but he's asking for food always. Now that person needs to go and to tell him, go and do what? Farm. What do you need to go and do that farming? And then you pray to God to help you assist that person to be farming so that he may be more responsible and more honest with all that uh, he gets from you. Now, that, that is so, that is a great medical mission, that is medical missionary work or a healing message that brings a lot, a lot of influence to the lives of people. We are supposed to influence the lives of people, but by making them better people in the society, having the character of God, understanding that this is what God wants. God do not want you to be in this city, walking here and there and becoming a criminal, yet you have strength enough. I'm telling you, young man, can you go back home and do this? Or what can you do best? Can I take you to a technical school and perhaps do some carpentry or masonry and earn your living from that? If the person is like this, do you continue helping <laughs> or listening to such a person? Mm -mm. Never. If you're a medical missionary of that, in heaven you'll be written. He, 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 he did what? Misuse was not a gold steward. That is a sad statement. So we need to be enlightened in regard to the plan of salvation. Each and every one of us here must understand the plan of salvation. There is not one in 100 who understands for himself the Bible truth on this subject that is so necessary to our present and eternal welfare. Now, the plan of salvation the sanctuary message that is the atonement, what Christ is doing in heaven, and what we need to do here below really matters. It is for our own eternal welfare. Whether we shall be, God shall say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Or he shall say, you are a slothful servant. You enter into the fire that was made for the what? For the devil from the foundation of the world. And they shall cry, gnashing their teeth. Those who have not followed the principle of God. They have not used that which God has given unto them. Now, 
how should we do this? God's purpose in giving the third angel's message is to prepare a people to stand what? True to him during the investigative judgment. Are we in that time of investigative judgment? How, should, how will we stand true to him? We are told that during the investigative judgment, God is looking at everyone, his character. The angels are taking records with terrible exactness. Now, everything is put into the record. The time that was not spent well, the opportunities that were misused, Okay, the sins that were not repented of. You see, the opportunities that were not, that were misused. God has given us that opportunity here, right? To learn and understand this principle, this, this plan. So if you don't use this plan, then your name, God forbid, taken from the book of life to the book of death. So all who understand what they are supposed to do, we can only stand true to God, cleansing ourselves by going into the work. How many, how many times will you sin if you are fully in the work of God, you are seeing a soul dying there and you are praying for God's grace to go to help you go and help that soul. How many times will you think about doing evil? How many times? Yeah, so when we get into this work that God is calling us unto, then we shall be purified. We shall be day by day conforming to the character of God. The Bible says that by beholding, we do what? We become changed. So if you are always praying and helping, just praying, God, how can I help in such a way? Now you will become like the one who gives you the power to do that. So it says, this is the purpose for which we establish and maintain our what? Publishing houses. So this is the plan, my brothers and sisters. This is the plan. This is how God wants us to work. This is how God wants us to demonstrate this work. To give the third angel's message impetus. So when that fourth angel in Revelation chapter 18 comes with glory, the glory is demonstrated <clears throat> or is a result of these things that are mentioned here. This is the what gives the work its efficiency. This is what meets the objective of the third angel's message. It is not just a theoretical knowledge, but it is a practical knowledge. It has to be seen. So people, we have to maintain, establish and maintain publishing houses. But God is not calling us to bring, to build a big house like this or hall like this, and then we subdivide it and bring those machines there. Now that is what, that is not what God is calling us into. Not a more kind of institution to do this. It should begin in simplicity, in your homes, there should be a publishing house. Now you always just think about, uh, think uh, publishing is taking or printing out books. How many understand, how many believe that is what is, what it is, publishing? It is just printing books and distributing them. That is publishing, full stop. Now, that one means we have not delved deep to understand really what publishing means. Now, publishing begins with your life. You are a publisher based on how you live. If you are living the truth that you preach, you are a book, you are a letter that people do what? Read. What does Paul say about that? You are epistle read to all. Yeah, so it must begin. If God has called me to be a cook, now every people can see those letters. 
can read the best food, the best diet, the best plan, meal plan, the, the best thing they need to help them. Because if they come and visit me, they see it. If it is about farming, you can do publishing. You, do, you cannot be gifted with walking and talking to people and, and, and trying to seduce them to, to get or buy a copy. You don't have that gift of talking. But you can do a great work in your farm, the way you have arranged your farm, the way you plant them, the way the outcome comes out. Hey, people just say, we need to go and visit so-and-so. And it tells us what the technique is using. Have you published a message? When they go, what do they do? They do the same. Can you come over and help us do this? You are publishing. You are a publisher. You can treat people well. You understand you are being called specifically in the line of physician work. You know, all are called to be medical missionaries, but not in the highest sense. This a call to the medical missionary work in the highest sense. You will understand that as we study. Some are not called to give remedies in the most intelligent way. I don't know whether you understand that. That those who are gifted in giving those remedial agencies in an intelligent, understanding way. Yes. So we need to understand how to be, to give this message to the world. So we need to establish schools. We need to establish sanitariums, hygienic restaurant, treatment rooms, and food factories. And then he says, this is our purpose in carrying forward every line of work in the course. So every line of work in the third angel's message is to be in a practical sense, practical way, live and practiced in our lives. Lived and practiced in our, in our lives. Because this prepares us to stand true to God during the time of investigative judgment. What is coming upon the whole world as, over, or as an overwhelming surprise? The impression and the execution of the Sunday sacredness. So the Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. For it is to be the test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. This test, uh, this is the test that the people of God must have before they are sealed. So you must know how the test comes. Right now we are in the testing time. And our probation is closing or is about to close. But how are we tested? In diet, you are tested. In the what you need to study, it is tested. How you need to farm and grow up your crop, you are tested. How you need to live with your family, your wife and your children. You are test, you are being tested. What doctrines you believe? It is right now because if the whole world is preaching about the Sunday sacredness, so you are tested the way you keep the Sabbath today, you prepare for it and keep it. Because when that time comes, it is either you stand to demonstrate that which you've been living. Are we together? So the testing time is right now for God's people who understand what they are supposed to do. When the National Sunday law is executed in the whole world, beginning with the United States of America, it is, our time is over, it is to the world. Those who have never heard the message of mercy. But how will we tell them that this is what God wants? It is by that time they find us ready, we can give them food, we can give them clothing, we can teach them the truth, we can tell them this is what the word of God says. And they believe 
and they come to the side of God. But if we have not demonstrated that, we don't have power to tell the world about it since we cannot go forth with the mighty message to bring down Babylon. Are we together? We cannot because we are already operating in the principles of Babylon, but it is fallen. So where will you be? You will also be fallen. Are you with me? Yeah. So the best way that God wants us to practice medical missionary work, this is just the, the beginning, is to work alongside these lines because it is what is going to bring true, true success. So I want to end here, but I believe that you have learned and you have understood what God wants us to do. And you are ready to do it. We are all ready to do, do that, that plan. What I will endeavor in to make an understand is how, where can I fall? How can I be that true gospel medical missionary that can bring impetus to the message? And God is ready to help us do that. How many are desiring for God to help them? Can we pray together? Our Father, what in heaven, we thank you for giving us rain. We thank you for giving us your words. Lord, may you help us to practice that plan that you have given unto your children and help us to demonstrate that character. For this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.